So welcome back, and uh, this is a painting I decided to do of the Blue Mosque. And I kind of alluded to it in the last video that I thought I would do another one and kind of make it a companion piece. But here you see me fooling around with the layout and stuff. Unfortunately, when I did the sketch, unlike the last time, I messed things up up and the video didn't record I had it all set to record I and I forgot to hit the record button so you see me coming into this now at the sketch up stage where I've already sketched it out and kind of laid it out and things like that and uh, again you know this time around on the videos I still have that annoying green square there there's a number of other things with uh, how I recorded that didn't turn out as great, but, you know, that's part of the learning process, and the other part is, is I think I've corrected it on some of the new videos, um, but unfortunately, you're not going to see that for a few weeks. So again, this is uh, where you're coming in, the rough sketch up to do the value study, and remembering I don't put in all the details, but I, I wanted to share more of some of my thoughts of what it was like to be in another country. Um, the Blue Mosque here is an absolutely gorgeous building to see and and it's very striking when you're in a, another country like Turkey to see the architecture differences. Um, architecture is one of those things I think we tend not to pay attention to after we've been at, in a location for a little bit. Um, so for instance living out here in the southwest now I still do notice Santa Fe style houses, which you can find them in various places across the United States, but this is primarily the area where those houses are meant to exist. So, you know, I am used to uh, experimenting with that type of architecture and trying to pay attention to it. But when I was in Turkey, the, the domed mosque, uh, it's such a hallmark architectural style that uh, I remember one place where we were at, we were overlooking the city, and you just see these domes all over the place. It, it really is a beautiful experience. And unfortunately, of course, none of the pictures I have are great ones of that landscape. But this is... Uh, the type of thing that draws me into these landscapes. Now, when I was in Turkey, the uh, another place that was a, an absolute joy to experience was the Grand Bazaar, where people would go shopping. Think of it as a, a mall in, an, in the outdoor sense, but of course much, much older and far more vibrant and uh, crowded. I can only imagine what it's like right now uh, with the pandemic being on, how difficult it must be for some of those shop owners. But the, the, the country of Turkey was a beautiful country to be in. In fact, you know, not to get into politics and stuff like that, but uh, some of the stuff that has happened there over the last number of years has just been absolutely devastating on the political level, how they've been set back culturally because of their current um, leader of their nation but that's neither here nor there uh, for the purposes of this video so while I'm doing this type of artwork again I'm I'm reflecting on some of the things in the past and I'm thinking about the future you know uh, I alluded to in the Hagia Sophia paintings you know whether I would ever go back or not and I would absolutely love to take my children back, but you know, it is so expensive to fly overseas and to, to do these types of experiences. And I'm a bit different than I was then. I kind of, in some ways, wouldn't want a guided experience. I would want to be able to go to there and, and stay and just experience the local culture a little more. Not that we didn't have opportunities. I'm certainly not suggesting that. When I decided to do this painting, one of the things I was pointing out at the beginning of the video um, inaudibly was how I decided to lay out this building and painting shifting everything to the right 
So if you compare it to the Hagia Sophia building, everything is shifted to the left. So I'm going the opposite direction. And this is one of a number of decisions I made that make it a different painting than the last one. Um, it's a color palette difference. There are, uh, I use ink in this one towards the end, but also that setting up of the space. So the spot where you'll see the most sky is, is closest to you on this page. And when I was doing this painting, of course, again, it was late at night when everybody else is in bed and I'm listening to music. And we are wrapping up our end of the year, right, for 2020. And um, I think for me, the end of the year is always the time to reflect on the past and the possibilities of the future. And, and that's not uncommon for anybody, right? In, in the church world, we often read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Um, some people know it as, as the uh, lyrics for the birds. They sang, turn, turn, turn from there. Uh, for everything there is a season. And Ecclesiastes is my absolute favorite book of the Bible. And it's a natural one that I use to go back to and continue to reflect on. But I think about that uh, changing seasons in our lives. And, you know, I do really hope that 2021 is going to be better than 2020 has been. Uh, you know, I am I tend to be a bit skeptical and I tend to not hold on to things uh, as a uh, hold on to hope too long, I guess I should say. I don't know if that's a good quality or bad quality. It probably depends on who you ask. But here I'm looking forward to 2021 being uh, a new year, being a, a new chance to do things. Uh, being online a lot, like many of you, I know I see people and hear people go, well, you know, a new year doesn't change anything. You're going to go about your day the normal way and all those things. But I believe that we make a choice when to change things. And sometimes we need something like that, you know, the end of a year to say, I'm going to change. So, for instance, you know, with my oldest, she's in high school right now, and I've reminded her at every time she's moved to a different school, this is a chance to reinvent yourself. Uh, you can be whoever you want to be. These people don't know you, right? Um, and that's true in the church world, right? Every church, you know, I am who I am, but there are mistakes I made at one church that I don't make at another one. There's mistakes I make uh, in one situation that I can catch myself on in the future. And that's the beauty of having a fresh start in front of you. And for me, that's kind of what 2021 is about. Um, not saying these problems that we have in our society or our culture are just going to evaporate. Heck, not even saying those any problems that I have in my personality or whatever are just going to disappear. That's not going to happen. It's still going to be there. But there are possibilities, right? There's a there's the fresh slate that we can uh, see what's going on. So I did have my uh, palette together and I was mixing up a gray to begin that first wash of my value study. I remember what we said about value study. That's just to get that idea of where your shadows are going to be. And your first layer is the lightest shadows. And then you go back for the darker shadows and the darker ones. And of course, I'm using a bigger brush and... I think you, if you go back to the Hagia Sophia videos, you'll notice that those, the gray shadowing in that is a little more brown. I actually got a little more blue in this, which I like, especially since it's the blue mosque. And uh, I really wanted to nail that kind of gray blue color because that's kind of the shade the actual building is. Uh, so this is kind of a, a weird type of shadow study. Because I'm thinking the whole time when I'm doing it that this is kind of the color I'm going to end up painting things too. So, different lens to see life in. So, 
So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the beginning of this new painting here. And uh, this series will be slightly smaller since I messed up the initial sketch and you don't get to see that. You'll only get to see three videos from this. But I hope again you'll join me with this process and, and I promise I'll continue to share some of my re personal reflections as we go forward. And I hope you are being safe and healthy and I hope to see you back soon.